Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is a dam problem and what we're trying to do here is find the net torque on the dam. Now the dam is made out of some sort of concrete that has a weight density of 100 pounds per cubic foot and behind the dam is water that has a weight density of 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. The dimensions of the dam, it's a height of 20 feet, a width of 10 feet, and it's 500 feet long and the water is all the way to the very top of the dam. Now the question is, will the water push the dam over or will the dam have enough torque to keep from getting pushed over? Now we can figure that out by finding the net torque. Now the water will give it a clockwise torque. So the torque from the water is clockwise. So the torque of the water is clockwise, so that's a negative torque. What about the torque of the dam? Well notice that the dam has the same weight for any slice of the dam, it has the same amount of weight, it doesn't change at all, so we can assume that the dam acts at the center of gravity, CG, at the center of gravity, all the weight is pulling down, so that would be the MG of the dam, and notice, based upon if this is the rotation point, that will give that a counterclockwise torque, so the torque of the dam is a positive torque where the torque of the water is a negative torque. And so if the positive torque is bigger than the negative torque, the dam will stay in place. If the negative torque is bigger than the positive torque, the dam would hmm, fall over, wouldn't be a good thing. All right, so let's calculate the torque of the dam first. So the torque is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the line of, line of action of the force to the point of rotation that would be this distance right here. So that would be the distance that I'm looking for over here. And the force would be equal to the weight of the dam. That would be the rho VG mass times gravity is the force times the distance, perpendicular distance. And so the density is 100 pounds per cubic foot. The volume of the dam, that would be 500 times 20 times 10 cubic feet. So it gives us pounds. Uh, G, well that, that is uh, rho times G is this, V is this, and the distance would be, uh, let's see, half the, the width, that would be 5 feet. All right, so let's calculate the torque of the dam. So we have um, 100 times 500 times 20, times 10, times 5 equals, and that is 50 or 5 times 10 to the 7, that's 50 million foot-pounds. So the torque is equal to 50 times 10 to the 6 foot-pounds. So that's what we call the positive torque that's keeping the dam from tipping over. What about the water pushing against the dam. Now notice, since the force varies with depth, hmm, we're going to need to integrate. So what we're going to do is we take a small strip, a small strip right here, on the dam, like this, and it's the distance y below the surface, but the torque is going to be based upon this distance right here. So that's the distance that we worry about the torque because it's about the pivot point right here. And so we can say that the distance is equal to the very height of the dam minus y. So that's the distance that we have to worry about, this distance right here, that the water pushes against the dam relative to the pivot point. Now, what is the force on that small little strip of dam? Well, the force, the DF, is equal to the pressure times the area. So since pressure is force divided by area, then force is equal to pressure times area. Of course, there's going to be a small little strip of area. And the pressure is going to be equal to rho uh, g y. That's the pressure depending upon the depth of the water. So that's going to be at the depth y below the surface at that point. And the area is going to be, well, let's see here. It's going to be the length of the, of the strip times the height, which is a dy. So that's going to be the force of every one of those little strips. That means that the torque on that little strip 
is equal to the force times the distance from the point of rotation to here, which is equal to d. And of course, that's equal to df times the d, which will be h minus y. And so now we can say that the total torque caused by the water is going to be equal to the integral of all little d torques. Of course, it's going to be negative because it gives us a negative direction on the torque. And so that's going to be equal to negative times df, which is the integral of rho g y l times dy. Uh, let's see here. That's my df, and I need to multiply that times h minus y, h minus y, and I still need my dy right here. And of course, I'm going to integrate from y equals 0 to y equals h, the total depth, which is 20 feet. So maybe I'll just put 20 feet here. That makes it a little bit clearer. So from 0 to 20 feet, and that's going to give us the total torque, and of course, it's going to be negative torque for the water. All right, now it looks like I'm going to have two integrals right here, and some of these constants are going to come out. So the torque on the, caused by the water is going to be minus the first integral, density GLH. Those are all constants that can come out. So we have density GLH times the integral of y times dy from 0 to 20, minus... Again, I can take out rho gl times integral of y squared dy from 0 to 20. Notice that this y times this y gives us y squared. The negative comes from here. And now I can go ahead and integrate and find the total torque caused by the water. So torque caused by the water is equal to negative density glh times, that's going to be y squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 20, minus rho GLH, um, and that's going to be y cubed over 3. You know what? Instead of using 20 as a limit, I'm going to use h as a limit, because that makes it a little bit better. h, so y squared from 0 to h, and y cubed from 0 to h. The reason I did that is because I have an h in there and I want to keep the, the units the same here. Okay, so that gives me the torque on the water is equal to minus, I can factor out a rho g l, that gives me uh, h cube over 2, h cube over 2 minus h cube over 3. And you know what? I don't have an h here don't have an h here on the second integral, so that'll give me h cubed over 3. And of course, that will be equal to minus density gl times h cubed over 6, because 1 over 1 half minus a third is a sixth. And now I'm ready to plug in the numbers to find the torque of the water. So torque on the water, caused by the water, is equal to negative times density of the water, which is a thousand, but actually that's a thousand. What we have to do here is we use not metric units, but imperial units, so it's 62.4 times G, which is, um, hmm, well, that's density times G is 62.4. The length is 500. H is 20. We have to cube that, and we divide the whole thing by 6. And let's see what that is equal to. And of course, we want that to be less than the torque on the dam. Uh, the torque caused by the dam, I should say. So we have 20 cubed divided by 6 times 500 times 62.4 equals, and that is 41.6, so minus 41.6 foot pounds. Now notice that is smaller number than that. So if I then add the two together, the torque of the dam plus the torque caused by the water is going to be equal to 50 times 10 to the 6 foot pounds minus 
41.6, 41.6 times 10 to the sixth, oh, times 10 to the sixth foot pounds is equal to 50 minus 41.6, 8.4, so it's going to be 8.4 times 10 to the sixth foot pounds of total torque. And notice since the torque on the dam, because the concrete is larger than the torque of the water, the water will not push over the dam, although I don't like the design. It's still, theoretically, the dam should be able to withstand the total torque by the water since it's bigger than the torque caused by the water. So we're good in this case, and that is how it's done.